Hey guys, so here is the Raspberry Pi 3. This is what I've been using on all of my OctoPrint servers. I currently have four down here. And I'm not talking about the new Raspberry Pi, you know, 3B Plus that just came out. I don't have one of those to test. But I've been really curious about what happens if you add active cooling to it. Does OctoPrint generate enough of a load to really make any difference? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple prints. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure the temperature and the CPU load on just a regular Raspberry Pi 3 with no active cooling. Then I'm gonna put the heat sinks on there. We'll try that out. And then I'll put the heat sinks and a cooling fan on top of that and just see what happens. So are you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to where nerdy is cool. I am your host, Paul, and once again, this is where we do all things I find nerdy and interesting. I've got many interests, 3D printing, the droid building, you name it. So we're here again, and I was watching a really cool video. You know, when you watch YouTube, sometimes on the side there come up various videos that you know may be of interest to you. And one that came up recently was from a YouTube channel called Explaining Computers. And he had a video called Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus Extreme Cooling. Now, a lot of people with these Raspberry Pis, what they do is they overclock them for higher you know, CPU speeds and for whatever apps they're running, you know, to make them run faster. Now, I have here the Raspberry Pi 3, and as I mentioned in the lead up, I have several of these running OctoPrint running on all my 3D printers. And one of the things that they mentioned in that video, and I'll link it up here up above if you want to check it out, it's, uh, it's really well done. It's a really great channel too. But uh, they had noticed that they ran testing and they basically did a little cycle where they maxed out the CPU to see how hot the processor got. And they were testing various methods of cooling. If you did nothing, if you put a heat sink on, if you put a heat sink in a fan, or in a few other things you could do to reduce the temperature load on the CPU. And it was really, really quite interesting. And it got my mind whirling, well, how much load does OctoPrint really put on my Raspberry Pi 3? And the only thing I could really find was information about the MPEG streamer. I found this little screenshot here where uh, the developer had mentioned that if you don't have one that supports buffering, you could run into some higher CPU cycles. Uh, but that's really been about it. I haven't seen anything in the OctoPrint forums that would really make me worry too much about CPU load or temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run basically three prints and I'm gonna do one with nothing on the CPU and uh, we'll see what happens there. And then on the uh, next two, uh, I'm gonna put the cooling fins on it here, the heat sinks, and uh, I'll put those back on here. We'll do a print and see what the temperatures do there and also monitor the uh, CPU load. And then I have uh, got hold of a five volt fan and this is a ridiculously big box for our little fan, but so be it. And uh, I just wanna see if it makes any difference whatsoever. So here we go, let's go with print number one and let's see what happens as we let things run. Well, print number two is underway. I went to work on putting the Noctura fan uh, onto this uh, cover. I required a little bit of soldering here, but uh, and I had to look up as far as which pins I can put five volt on, because this is the five volt fan. But as you can see, everything is in there and tucked in. And uh, I can give it power and just pray the fan goes. It's a very quiet fan, I did point out. All right. And uh, we just kind of guide. I just used some 440 uh, screws. Obviously I could have used something a little bit smaller. You know, I'll, I'll neaten this up in the future if I decide to keep this here. Um, but for now, for the uh, practical testing, I think that's gonna work just fine. A funny story, I noticed that they had given uh, in the kit uh, these essentially some uh, uh, taps where you put the wires on both sides in and press the button with a plier and you can just tap them right together. And I'm, I'm just so used to having to strip wires and solder and put things together that that's what I did. So it wasn't until after I did all this that uh, they had provided me all the tools to make it a whole lot easier. So I did it to myself again. 
One of the things I came across while I was researching this topic was, did a couple searches and someone had mentioned, and there's an article here in their forum, uh, I see high CPU usage when MJPEG streamer is running. And that's one of the services that runs, we saw that on the screenshots here. Uh, that's running in the background and that's what's allowing you from be able to see uh, what the camera's seeing you know, remotely um, when you check in. So, and what they mention in here is that if your camera, if your webcam uh, is not able to do a MJPEG compressed, uh, what happens is that's going to require a heavier CPU load on the Raspberry Pi, and that will thus give you the spike you're seeing in the CPU usage. And they listed a command here, and I just ran it on my screen here. And as you can see here, where it says uh, pixel format MJPEG compressed. So I'm not going to run into that issue. So you could run this command uh, on your Raspberry Pi to find out if your camera is indeed able to run the compressed video, or if you're running uncompressed, then you're going to see a CPU hit. And as we've seen with most of the uh, uh, the three prints that we've done so far, CPU load hasn't been any factor whatsoever until the very end when it's taking the JPEG stream and turning it into a file, and then it runs that AV convert. And uh, that's where we see those you know 10 or 15 seconds of 100% CPU usage. We see the temperature go up. And of course, across all three of them, there's a you know, significant difference between the temperatures on them. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys that command and what you can do to find out if your video capture webcam uh, is running the uh, compressed or non-compressed MJPEG, because that could make a difference. Okay, so we have some results from all three of those tests. So let me give you a little screenshot here and a little time lapse of each of them running here. Uh, I want you to pay attention, I mean, first of all, as this thing's trucking along, uh, first of all, let's cover the one that's just a bare board. And as that's going across, you're seeing the temperature bounce between 43 and 44, okay? Then, as we get to the end here, where it does the uh, AV convert, where it basically takes that stream and turns it into a file, you're going to see that spike, and you're going to notice on the right side, uh, where the temperature is rising, and you're going to see that we hit a high of 53 degrees Celsius. Now on print number two, we had the heat sinks on the Raspberry Pi 3, and as we start at the print here, you can see the printing temp is staying pretty much between 42 and 44 degrees, and it's trucking right along. And then as we get to the very end, where we get to the, again to the part where we're taking the file and creating the uh, file, we're going to see that the temperature spikes up to 49 degrees Celsius. So it's done a little bit better than the bare board. You know, the bare was 53, this one was 49. So uh, definitely a small improvement there. Okay, this time we have the Noctura fan on top of the heat sink, and it's running silently, might I add. But uh, as we start the print, you're going to see that the temperature pretty much stays between 29 and 31 degrees Celsius. And that, that I mean, that's remarkable. I mean, the other two were uh, between 42 and 44, so that's a sizable drop right there. And then as we get to the very end, where of course we're creating the file for the uh, AV uh, convert uh, program, you're going to see that the temperature does spike, but look at the number. 35 degrees Celsius. That's less than the idle speed of the bare board or the heat sink. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a remarkable draw. So it's, as you can see, for not a lot of money, uh, I mean, the fan uh, ran me about, you know, 12 bucks. Um, if you're curious about the CPU and you want to keep it as cool as possible, uh, certainly the way to go is the heat sink and the fan. So the big question is, do you need to do any of this stuff? I mean, I've given you a little bit of data and I chased it down just because I was curious. I wanted to see how much of a load Octoprint put on a Raspberry Pi. And as we can see, the first answer is not a whole lot until the very end when it's creating you know, the file at the end of the stream. So if you're at all curious of, to see where the load is during the entire process of your print, that's it. Now, to be let, let's be clear, okay? I was checking the specs here on my laptop and the Raspberry Pi 3 is not going to throttle itself until it hits 85 degrees Celsius. We're nowhere near that with any of these tests. The highest temperature we got was 53 degrees Celsius. 
so we're well shy of any dangers of you know being you know a burden to the CPU or losing performance to, you know as a result of heat. So on one hand, you can continue to run the Raspberry Pi 3 without any kind of cooling and you won't see any degradation from that. But if you are a power user and you like to have your stuff run as cool as possible, for the price of a heat sink and a CPU fan that costs maybe 12, 15 bucks, depending on where you're located, plus shipping, you can drop the uh, temperature of this processor significantly without a whole lot of money. So do you gain anything? I don't know, but you know, it's one of those things as an IT guy, you like to have your stuff run as cool as possible and just to see, you know, what this could do. And remember the other thing I had, I also had other utilities running in the background and measuring the CPU load and temperature. So, you know, the OctoPrint is not t tasking up your Raspberry Pi tremendously. So I hope I left this clear as mud. Will you see any gain adding a CPU fan? No. Is it cool? Yes. See what I did there? Okay. So anyway, that's my video for this time, and I just want to remind you guys that you can find me on the internet, on Facebook, where Nerdy is Cool, Instagram, where Nerdy is Cool, and also where Nerdy is Cool.com. And I also want to remind you guys that if you wish to support me at Patreon, I have one Patreon patron so far, and I would love to have more. I would appreciate your support. It would help me get more toys in here and some upgrades. So if you wish to help me out that way, I appreciate it. The link is down below, patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. Also have a link on the YouTube homepage if you want to go through PayPal. So if that's the way you want to help me out, appreciate it. So as I said, that's our video for this time. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. I appreciate your feedback. So until next time, remember, this is where nerdy is cool.